Hello everyone. I've had a few requests for this wiki review on what to do if I did not pass the pants pan ray. I have spoken to an increasing number of students who did not pass one, two, or more times. First of all, this is a difficult time as our employment is contingent on passing and one's self-confidence can be low. When I've asked these students and practitioners what kind of advice they've received from educators and their fellow PAs on how to improve their test taking skills, some of the suggestions they get are study more, speed read, use mnemonics, take lots of tests, and others like it. I believe the responses are well-meaning but lack real substance. A number of years ago, I was asked by Brian Sadie, a PA and assistant professor at Toro University in Nevada. He asked me, is Joe practicing evidence-based teaching and learning? At the time, I knew Joe's style of learning worked for me and others. The pass rate in my class was high, but I didn't have the data to explain or to prove it. This sent me on a mission to answer that question. I was surprised at the different opinions, articles, YouTube channels, etc. that are out there with no concrete uh, evidence to back it up. Then through a TED talk, I stumbled onto a document written by Dr. John Pelle, a neurobiologist from Texas Tech. So over the past 15 years, he's compiled a book titled Successful Types of Medical Education, which I have used as a springboard for this lecture. The document is based on neuropsychology studies and data. Over the past 15 years, he has counseled struggling medical students. I'm afraid if I had not been posed this question by Brian and had these resources available to me from these great scientists, I might, like others, not had the knowledge to help others in a scientific proven way. More on this uh, to come in this wiki, wiki review. I worked with a number of practitioners and students who struggled to pass the pants pan ray. I remember one ex-military student in particular who served in the special forces as a medic. After getting to know him and learning what he knew, I would in a real life medical emergency literally put my life in his hands. I trusted his trauma medical skills. But when it came time to take tests like the pants, he had lots of anxiety and struggled. I'm going to share with you today what I shared with those who I've worked with. By the way, the students I've worked with have all passed. This is not a guarantee, but will position you to best accomplish the task. By the way, the courses who guarantee you that you'll pass is a marketing tool, and I know of a lot of money that has been refunded because of these promises. Here is an overview of what we will discuss. I will go into more detail on each point highlighted in blue as they offer the most insight. The other points are common sense and easy to follow. At the beginning of each lecture series, online or face-to-face, -face, Joe does review in detail a timeline, the environment, study habits, and then gives you the high yield material in order to best prepare to take the pants pan ray. The general tendency after not passing is to jump right back into studying without going through what I've outlined. The flight or fight response is, is part of our emotions and the thought is if I only study harder I'll do better. We must stop, take a deep breath and be mindful enough to gain insight of what we're doing right, wrong and how to improve in order to recertify certify. Stop, let's take inventory. Take a deep breath. You are not allowed to take the pants to the pan ray unless you're intelligent. This is not an intelligence question. You have graduated PA school and or ultimately are practicing as a PA. That says something about you. First, review the timeline, the environment, the study habits, and the material, material you use to study. Review the NCCPA analysis of your last pants pan ray. Review how you perform in each knowledge and skill area in each organ system. We're going to go over this. What type of test taker are you? How did you do in, do in general um, when taking multiple choice time test? Are you anxious when you take the exams, especially when there's, a, it, there's high importance um, placed on it? Do you feel your scores generally do not reflect your understanding of the material? And that's what we're going to kind of go into. One, set a date in which you'll take the test um, after you review this material and kind of figure out you know, how much, how much uh, time you're going to allot yourself but not too much time where you're going to become stagnant and, and frustrated. 
stick to that date. Two, create an environment free of distractions, set up times to study with others. We'll talk a little bit about this and the importance of that, why we do that. Three, create a flashcard with knowledge, the knowledge and skills area plus the organ systems with the percentage of content and we're going to go into this in detail why it's important. Four, study high yield material. So the, the good thing about Joe and what I like about him because I'm, I'm in a specialty asthma and allergy is you look at a PA board review book and there's mountains of data and he, there's no there's no emphasis on what you know is more likely to be tested on so you get in this habit of just reading everything the great thing about Joe he's been doing it for so many years is he kind of emphasized okay this is important this is important you know kinda don't worry about this other stuff and he takes that kinda guesswork out of it, it saves you a lot of time because then you don't have to sit down and go okay what what's more important than other stuff and he goes through all that he not only gives you the information, but he also gives you additional resources. It's important to teach others, your your colleagues, patients, children. I had a guy, he didn't really have anybody around, so he either taught his mom or when his mom wasn't around, he taught himself in the mirror. We'll talk about that also. Study with others that complement your learning type and with those that will motivate and encourage you. Not waste your time, not joke around, not get distracted. Practice taking tests. There are different test banks uh, that Joe reviews. Um, the complexity and breadth. Uh, test your knowledge. Uh, we'll talk about um, uh, looking at uh, test questions critically to help you um, take, uh, take tests better. Uh, set up mock exams for yourself. Uh, make sure you're practicing deliberately. I think it's important that people exercise and meditate. That's another thing this fight or flight doesn't allow us to do. We just want to study all the time and we don't allow ourselves to recuperate and, 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 and de-stress ourselves. Number nine, frequently reevaluate your timeline and adjust as needed. And number ten, get enough quality and quantity of sleep. This is really important, something I didn't understand and something we kind of shoot ourselves in the foot. Um, but we'll talk about this in detail, that's really important. When studying, we must do so deliberately by making decisions, connecting concepts, preparing to answer specific questions and types of questions. When studying in the past, I tended to focus solely on signs and symptoms, maybe uh, first-line therapy. One thing I saw people struggle with and I insist everybody do is to read through the NCCPA knowledge and skills area plus the organ systems and then how each will be weighed as far as questions go and you're gonna create your own flashcard read through history taking and performing physical examination the knowledge of and the cognitive skills area using laboratory and diagnostic studies I want you to write everything down in your own words so you understand it uh, case in point, if you read underneath uh, using laboratory and diagnostic studies, knowledge of, the second bullet point down says cost effectiveness of diagnostic studies or procedures. I found that kind of interesting. I didn't understand that they could ask you something on that. That's just one example of that's a test question that you can miss by not understanding that they're looking at cost when you order labs. Go through formulating most likely diagnosis, health maintenance, clinical intervention, pharmaceutical therapeutics using laboratory and diagnostic studies. Here's a flashcard that I made with the NCCPA knowledge and skill areas. Make sure you read through each skill area and knowledge area along with the different organ systems and how they're weighted make your own flashcard. Uh, one of the questions somebody asked me was, do I make a flashcard and enter every single thing on each disease? No, you need to have this flashcard beside your notes so when you're writing them, and we're gonna talk about concept mapping, that you put what you're learning into a category so that you understand it. Successful Types of Medical Education, written by John Pelle, was the catalyst of my understanding of why some have trouble passing the pans pan rate. More importantly, it provides a path on how to shift one's learning to better prepare 
to do well on the pants pan ray. I've added a link to his free book and one of the many videos he has produced on this subject. I have to confess in the past I was consistently scoring between the very low and the very high score takers in my class. I think if I had had a history of scoring exceptionally well on exams I would not have had the insight and determination to put to put some time and effort into learning about this. I remember stuttering with my peers in PA school. We would study together and we'd study the same material. If given a one hour and 15 minute time test on the material, some of my peers would take the test in 15 minutes or less and score about 95% consistently. I would use the whole time myself, the hour and 15 minutes and score Scores would be between 75 and 85 percent on average. I would ask myself and my peers, what was I doing differently than they were? And I never had a clear answer to the question until I was challenged by Brian Sadie to whether we were producing evidence-based teaching and learning. As I have been able to personally apply the techniques myself and with others, I am sharing with you what I have shared with other students and practitioners. I have improved my own score and also have had students who struggled to pass the pan ray pants in the past pass the tests. We will cover the following we will cover the following concepts as outlined. Linear versus uh, interactive learners, linear versus interactive learners, the Myers and Briggs type indicator, and there's each of them, we'll go through them. A combination of types do well on multiple choice time tests. Concept mapping, what do we need to study? Question analysis, teaching others, sleep, meditation, and exercise. The linear learner connects concepts with their associated facts in sequence and doesn't really look for associations between concepts unless they are also presented in the lecture as a concept. They tend to gravitate toward medical disciplines which can benefit from their approach such as procedures that would require a detailed stepwise approach. The integrative learner spontaneously looks for connections between concepts and for, and for facts that may apply to more than one concept. One example that an integrated learner might enjoy is trauma surgery in which they have to think on a fly and not have a set procedure before them. An important thing to point out here is that one is not superior to the other, although certain tasks do lend themselves to a certain type such as integrative learners seem to do better or have an easier time in taking multiple choice uh, question tests. The good news is you can shift from one to the other. I added this slide as I was creating a wiki review realizing I missed the critical concept. I had a significant aha moment when introduced to the concept of the, of the illusion of learning by Dr. Pele. Forgetting is a normal and protective function built into our own neurophysiology. Have you ever sat down to read and while you're reading the material makes sense, the concepts are clear and at the end of the study you think to yourself, there's no way I could forget that information. You go to bed, you wake up the next day, think about the excellent study session the night before, and realize you can't remember one-tenth of what you had read or learned. We know that now that while learning we are creating physical dendritic branches that are being phosphorylated and, creating, and create a working memory now. During sleep any information that didn't have an attachment to something significant, profound, or emotional will be pruned, i.e. discarded. I like to think of it as an analogy of sitting down at my computer at home. If I open a PowerPoint presentation to create a new wiki review, if I write for hours and I've, I've created 50 slides complete with illustrations and narrative, I take breaks but I never once save the document anywhere. While the computer is on and, the power, and a power failure has not occurred, I have the document and can recall and access everything that I created. What happens if I shut down the computer? To go to bed, I by bypass all prompts to save the document and no temp file is created. Will I be able to access the document in the morning? No. 
It's because I didn't tell the operating system to save the temporary working data into long-term memory that will survive when the power is off. While working on a document, the active or temporary data is accessible via read-only access, read access memory, which needs power to store that data. Long-term data is stored on a hard drive or external drive that stores data when the power is not on. While studying, you must tell your brain the information is important and to store it into long-term memory. This wiki review is to help you learn how to store data long-term, but we don't want to do it as individual pieces of information. We want to put it into a working conceptual model that we can use later, especially on timed multiple choice tests. This is just an introduction to MBTI or Myers and Briggs type indicator. There is a much more detailed explanation in Dr. Pelle's book. There is also a plethora of information in books, journal articles, and studies to support the science behind the MBTI. We all tend to have a preference in the way we learn. I want those listening to this podcast to fold their arms. After you've completed this task, now refold your arms the opposite direction. Which way were you able to fold your arms without thinking? What happened when you were asked to fold your arms the opposite direction or configuration? Did the second arm configuration take more of your attention and thinking? As we all have a preference to the way we fold our arms, we also have a preference to the way we learn. There is no right or wrong way to learn, but data from the MBTI studies show that when it comes time to process information for multiple choice tests, the way we prepare determines how well we do. To learn more, follow the link to this book. There are no absolutes. There are, there are those who can switch between their preferences toward learning, but this is an exception to the rule. Each type is given a single letter designation. Extroversion, E, preference, preferences are to study with others, talking right away to help understand the material. Introversion, I, the preference is to study alone, have lo longer attention spans, and prefer quiet contemplation. Sensing types have a preference to read material from beginning to end, not moving on until they are satisfied that they've covered material satisfactorily. You tend to memorize lots of facts, but your scores on tests don't reflect what you think you have learned. Intuitive, you tend to jump around when studying material, studying interesting material first. You're able to arrive at correct answers on a test by by deductive reasoning. Thinking. When given new information, you use logic and objective evaluation when faced with decisions. Feeling. When giving new information, you look at the data in the context of how can it impact mankind. Judging. Prefer to have a rigid, planned, and structured lifestyle. Perceiving. Prefer a more spontaneous lifestyle and don't mind adapting to changing plans. The combination of each single letter abbreviation for your preference in each type dimension provides a four letter designation that describes you. In Dr. Pelle's book, there's a description of all 16 types in Appendix A. Putting it all together, your type is greater than the sum of its parts. Reading directly from Dr. Pelle's book on page 39, Open quote. Keep in mind as you evaluate your type description that your type is not a pigeonhole, but a way you have chosen to describe yourself. It is as natural as saying, I really prefer jazz to country music. That statement doesn't confine you to listen only to jazz or restrict you from listening to country music. It does say something, however, about where you are most likely to be found at a music festival. End quote. The graph is a, comp a comparison the graph is a comparison of aptitude and achievement of 16 types on time multiple choice tests. As you can see, each four letter designation shows a consistent tendency to predict how they will score in general. Concept mapping is a stepwise method to facilitate critical thinking while studying. This will facilitate the long term storage of concepts during sleep and help decrease the pruning of information during REM. The example shown here is a representation of the biochemistry of vitamin D. There, note, there's no right or wrong way to construct a concept map. The most important thing is that you create the map yourself 
don't copy straight from another map, although you can integrate other ideas into your own from another, and you are actively making decisions while making the map. Making decisions while studying makes you use the four steps of learning as shown to the right. The fifth and final step is the most, most often not used, and you can fall into the trap of reading without learning. I skipped con concept maps for a while. Instead, I used a more complex method of my own to take notes. It wasn't until I was trying to explain how the clotting cascade behaved differently in creating DVTs in the venous system versus thrombi created in the arterial system. I immediately started using concept maps. I'll admit, I was worried it would take too much time to create concept maps, but after some time, it was quicker and then, than my old method and it helped me to recall con complex concepts. It also helped me to recognize and integrate facts from one lecture with concepts of another. Concept maps also help, help, me, help us to gain more insight into the pathology involved with disease syndromes instead of just blindly memorizing sign symptoms, lab results, etc., which I've fallen into that trap before. Dr. Pele also has a number of excellent videos describing concept mapping. There's a link to his YouTube page on the slide with the link to the, his book, but I'll also put the place the same link in the description below. How you study is as important as what you study. Just three days ago, I sat down with a student who was stressed after not having passed uh, pants three times. I asked him what his study materials consisted of, and I also looked at his notes. He was studying from a number of PA board review books, and had some notes from each. His question, and I get this a lot, was, it's impossible to study everything from all the material. What do I study? Joe's lectures were invaluable to me personally, as I had practiced in a specialty of allergy and asthma for six years before recertifying. I had bought a very popular course online that reviewed and tracked one's progress. They've reviewed every single disease or syndrome listed by the NCCPA. They also had a test, a test bank. I found myself reviewing a lot of material, but I never felt confident that I had learned the concepts, but just random facts. That's when I called Joe and I attended his class. It was also the start of the journey to get his material online. The lectures are uploaded in real time, so everything's up to date. Over the past 15 years, Joe has answered the question, what to study? His full lectures can be found at www.paboardreview.org, O-R-G. Question analysis. Another common frustration of those students and practitioners that I've worked with is the excessive anxiety they feel leading up to and while taking tests in general, but especially when taking the pants or pan ray. Below are some suggestions that increase test taking skills, thus decreasing the test taking anxiety. There is a way to request an extension for extra time on the pants pan ray. See the NCCPA website for details. The use of test bank questions is an excellent tool to study for the pants pan ray. Test questions can evaluate your understanding of material. Steadily increase the number of test questions you are taking. Try to set up test times that mimic the pants pan ray. Doing so will help you to improve your stamina and test taking skills. When studying questions, read the question out loud and write down what you think the key points are. You will have to mouth the words in the actual test as talking is not permitted. This will get you in the habit of reading the test question completely and accurately. I have missed easy questions by not reading the whole question or not reading the question accurately. For, ex for example, there are small nuances when reading the preface hyper versus hypo. Another example is reading which of the following is or which of the following is not. Don't miss the easy ones. Read questions with others. Silently come up with your own answers and why you chose that answer. Compare and discuss your answers with your study partners. The dialogue will facilitate understanding and consolidate your memory of the information. 
Let's go over a question and use the NCCPA Knowledge and Skills Area flashcard that I created. Given this test question, I want you to pause the video, read the question yourself, use mine or your own Knowledge and Skills Area flashcard to categorize your findings, then come up with the next step, differential lab diagnostic studies to narrow your differential. And if there's any treatment that you'd like to start right away, let me know. I purposefully didn't include multiple choice answers to choose from. When critically analyzing a question, one approach to take is to think about a con condition or conditions that this patient can represent before even looking at any answers. This will train us to critically analyze a question arriving at a conclusion more effectively. What diagnostic studies would you order to arrive at a definitive diagnosis or narrow your differential? What, concern, what concerns you most about this patient? What is your differential diagnosis? First, given a patient's chief complaint, short history and vitals, this patient can decompensate rapidly at any minute. If we look at his blood pressure, it's 95 over 65. The difference between a stable systolic blood pressure and unstable is stated in many places at 90 millimeters of mercury. We know he can go into shock. He's already felt lightheaded, although he didn't lose consciousness, given his age and the fact that he underwent uh, surgery a week ago, was on bed rest. He did have swelling in his, his left calf. When you check his left calf, it is tender on examination. His O2 sat is at 91. Anything uh, below 93, 94 is unreliable, and you have to get the ABG to find out really where they are. His heart rate is at 112. That's tachycardic. He's probably compensating uh, for an increased uh, pulmonary vascular pulmonary vascular resistance due to uh, what do you think it is? Most likely it's a pulmonary emboli. I believe it said he didn't have any history of uh, uh, cardiopulmonary disease, but we can't always just rely on that. Probably should get a 12, K, a 12 lead AKG at some point because it's non-invasive and rapid, but we don't want to waste time um, uh, on too many things. A spiral CT scan is the gold standard test. VQ scan is a second choice and could be used if the kidneys are compromised. D-dimer is sensitive for DVTs and PEs. Remember, sensitivity means if it's positive, how likely is it to be what you're looking at? And specificity is if it's negative, how unlikely? A test that has a high sensitivity and specificity um, is better than one or the other. Treatment, IV heparin and Coumadin started at the same time followed by PO Coumadin for three to six months after discharge. INR 2.0 to 3.0 is considered therapeutic. They can use Lovenox um, in an outpatient setting. So Virchow's triad of venous stasis, vessel wall damage, and hypercoagulability reflects the underlying pathophysiology. Right heart failure secondary to the increased pulmonary vascular resistance due to obstruction in the vasculature can cause cardiac arrest if not aggressively treated. I looked up a statistic and it said 79% of deaths from PE occurred in the first hour. Finally, if you have not been creating concept maps in the past for your notes for this particular condition, do so. I have included my concept maps. Remember, it's while you're creating, drawing your own map where your understanding of concepts and relations takes place. Copying somebody else's will not yield the same results. It's okay to compare maps with others, which can help you to gain insight or maybe correct a correlation or fact that you didn't understand or had incorrect. During the illusion of learning slide, we talked about memory consolidation and a pruning of unwanted information taking place during sleep. The quality and quantity of sleep is directly related to our success. We all, not, we all have not gotten enough sleep, and that will happen, but if we make it a habit to only get four to five hours of sleep before a test, we really are putting ourselves at a disadvantage. I remember studying for a test. I had studied for hours, and I only got about four hours of sleep because I was studying. I woke up, I was feeling good, thought I was cognitively nimble, but it wasn't until I tied my shoes that I realized I may not be in a prime state to take my test. I had to pause and concentrate to remember how to tie my shoes. Not getting enough sleep on a consistent basis was another cause of my average grades. I made the mistake of 
substituting sleep for ineffective studying. Hashtag fail. I have included a reference on this slide to an outside source supporting the importance of sleep with memory and learning. Thanks for watching this wiki review written by paboardreview.org. If you have any questions or comments, please send them to wes at paboardreview.org.